Thanks for coming. This talk is about the origins of Tantra. Especially the left hand side of Tantra or sometimes called Black Tantra. Everybody's heard of yoga <coughs> as a system of culture for the health and half the yoga is a sign of this. And then there's the meditation is that this is part of the right hand side or white tantra where you restrict the senses and you sublimate your feelings. But there comes a point in every yogi's life, maybe not this life, but some lifetime, when <coughs> the limitations of white tantra become evident. And if you look at one of the foremost books on yoga, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, it talks about this, this issue. And it's in the portion on practice, the second chapter. Okay, and here's the, here's the translation. It's the 18th verse in the second book, and in this book it's particular, it's 100, page 104, the Patanjali Yoga Sutras by Swami Satchidananda, my guru. The scene is, the is of the nature of the gunas. Illumination, activity, and inertia. Sattva, rajas, and tamas. And consists, consists of the elements and sense organs, whose purpose is to provide both experiences and liberation to the purusha. So this is an odd thing to be saying. In another, other translations, they say, enjoyment of both good and bad and liberation. Because experiences are both good and bad. So if that's the case, why would you have an experience both good and bad, and the answer to that is, is that you can't leave the experiences behind until you know what they are. So you have to know both ends of the range in order to leave the whole thing behind. And this means the good as well as the bad. Everybody knows the bad in some sort of way. But who knows the good? And the tantric answer is, we do. We know how to increase the intensity of the experience on the good side. Now, sometimes people get lost in the good. Sexual tantra is one example. If you only experience that, which is a second chakra, you won't know the other chakras experience. And the higher experience that are there that you will leave behind. So people think they know what Tantra is, but Tantra main aim is to give you experiences of the good. So the left hand side. The end result of that is 
having seen that and gone from the lower to the higher chakras, then you leave the whole thing behind and go on to the infinite. Because now you know what the infinite is. Infinite leads to liberation. So if that's the case, why do people mistake? what Tantra is doing. Well, until just recently, the intention was to hide. To hide this from other people, to hide uh, from their own life, because they didn't feel people were ready for this. So if you really want to know what Tantra is all about, you have to have knowledge of the sense pleasures in their fullness in order to leave it behind. So that means in the first chakra when it's awakened all the, sen the activities of the sen senses are enhanced. Everything tastes better. You hear better. You see your, You hear things better. You see things. In the second chakra, sex in interaction with people, not just your mate, become more intense because social relationships are a type of sexual activity. So all that gets better, not just being in bed with somebody. I just wanted to finish off by saying that uh, I have made a statement that uh, if you don't have philosophy, philosophy is female in nature. Now, it is and it isn't. The uh, energy always is female. Directed energy is a combination of male and female. And just direction without energy is just male. So, in order to understand philosophy in its fullness, you have to have both male and female energy. And, again, that's an experience that you learn through awakening the Kundalini and manipulating it. I know this is a little strange way to end it, but that's it for today. Thank you.